Hey everybody, welcome to Why Am I Yelling? I am Krista Rizzo, and today we are talking about something that I didn't expect to be talking about, quite honestly. I spent some time this morning with some people who have opened my eyes to a world that is affecting our children, and I want to talk about it because it's really important and we all kind of need to band together and effectively make some change. And that's really what this is about. So I'm not sure how I get invited to some of these things. It's probably because Why Am I Yelling started out as a parenting blog. And I used to coach a lot of parents when I first started my coaching practice. And while that has evolved, I still keep in touch with a lot of the parents that I have worked with and the people still follow me. And so I think that gives me an advantage to be able to get invited to things that raise awareness in the parenting community. And this is a super important one. So today I was invited to an event about e-cigarettes and how vaping and e-cigarettes are and juuling are affecting our kids and how this is turning into an epidemic and an addiction problem. So I went to an event this morning in the city and it was um, a campaign for tobacco, tobacco free kids. Hello, right here. I'm going to give you guys a bunch of information and all the comments and stuff when I post this on social media so you can follow and donate and call your senators and do everything you need to do to advocate for this cause. And I met with some women from a company called Parents Against Vaping, eSigs.org. Uh, it's called PAVE, and I'm going to just cover that up, uh, but I will also put that in there. And I learned a lot. So at my table... We, we're having breakfast. So at my table, I sat between two lovely young women, Abigail from Paducah, Kentucky, and Madison from Portland, Oregon. Uh, and there was a dad at my table who I apologize, I forgot your name. And there was a guy from, his name was Boot, fantastic name, oh, by the way, uh, from the company that was putting on this event, uh, fightflavoredesigs.org. And so... I wanted to know how these girls had gotten involved in juuling and vaping and what happened. And so Madison is uh, a junior in college. She started vaping in high school, maybe a little bit younger. She was a nationally or state ranked gymnast. I think she was 13 or 14 at the time, super young. And somebody that she looked up to on the gymnastics team was vaping. And so she was like, huh, well, if she's doing it, maybe I should be doing it too. And so that's how she started. She started because a friend who she looked up to, someone she admired, was vaping. And in New York City, they recently banned flavors. This is a big deal because flavors for the vape, for the jewel, are very addictive. It tastes like candy. Uh, Madison was telling me that her, that her first try was uh, Captain Crunch flavored, and that was her favorite cereal, so she got addicted to the Captain Crunch flavor. And nobody really thought that the nicotine that is in these in these pods, in these cartridges, uh, was a lot. And quite frankly, I had no idea, but apparently it is a lot. So one jewel pod is worth, I think, one pack of, or two packs of cigarettes. I think that's what it is. Anyway, she was saying that her her story is she got addicted to the nicotine and that led to more recreational drug use, marijuana, a little bit harder stuff. We didn't go into detail about what it was. She made a whole presentation. I'm not saying anything that is not out in public. So she told her story. She realized that she needed to make a change. Uh, she said the hardest thing to quit was the jeweling. It wasn't the drugs. It wasn't the, the pot. It was the jeweling. Uh, and she has been sober for, I believe, three years. So that's amazing. Abigail from Paducah, Kentucky, started her first time she ever tried vaping. It was at her first uh, high school football game. She was a freshman, so she was 14 years old. And she actually started doing it and got addicted to it and got caught in the bathroom or the, the gym locker room when she was changing for her physical education class. 
she was doing it. Someone saw, they told the principal, she got put on in-school suspension uh, or in-school detention, whatever it was, and had to tell her parents. And the way she quit was because her parents are separated or, or not together and her mom lives a few hours away. And so in the summer, she moved in with her mother to a more rural place than Paducah, Kentucky, and did not have access to get the things that she wanted, uh, get the get the jewels, get the vapes. And so that's how she quit. And she has now become, they are both advocates and they speak about it and they go on tour and they talk to schools and they talk to kids and they talk to um, the, their local government uh, and their local politicians about how we can change these laws. But what really pisses me off is that the tobacco companies have actually gone out and they have created marketing campaigns that are geared toward our children to want to try these addictive things that are harming their bodies. They are putting holes in their lungs. They are affecting their pulmonary health. There was a doctor talking about it today. They get seizures. They have asthma. Um, all kinds of things happening. Uh, their long-term effects are not known because this is such a new thing. But this, these things contain so many harsh, terrible chemicals. It's like spraying a can of aerosol down your throat is basically what, what this pediatrician was saying today. There is a huge impact on brain development, and we don't know how bad it is because, again, this is all still so new. Five million kids use e-cigarettes e in this country. Five million. The girl, Abigail, who was sitting next to me, said 60% of her school, of her high school, vapes. That's crazy. There's 2,000 kids in her high school. 60% of those kids, they vape. That's crazy. So how do we make a change? We have to reach out to our local governments. We have to advocate for more laws around protecting our children. And we have to fight the tobacco companies. I mean, what they're doing is disgusting. It's disgusting. And it really, really, really pisses me off. Like, to no end. I was, like, in tears today listening to these young men who were sitting at other tables talk about how they got addicted and how they they would hide it from their parents. and. Uh, a jewel, a jewel, com jewel. The actual company went to a private school in New York City to do a uh, a presentation, and they said something like, um, "It's not as bad as cigarette smoking, and uh, we don't really know if it's addictive, or some nonsense like that." Like, are you kidding me? You're killing our children. That is, I, I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind today. So, I'm gonna put on the next slide. A bunch of email addresses, not email addresses, but a bunch of websites where you can go and donate, advocate, find information, get statistics, educate yourself, and start having conversations with your kids about why this stuff is so bad for them. Let's start getting them into the mindset that they are worth way more than putting narcotics into their system and advocate for healthier lifestyles. Smoking and jeweling and all that kind of stuff is really bad for you, and we all know it. And so why are we allowing this to happen in our world? Let's make a change, you guys. Um, campaign for TobaccoFreeKids.org. TobaccoFreeKids.org. Um, this is Parents Against Vaping eSigs, so ParentsAgainstVaping.org. And I'm going to have all that information on the next slide. Thank you for watching, and let's go make some change. Call your local government and do something positive for our kids. Have a great day.